Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and today's video is going to be another watercolour one because we're halfway through a series that I'm doing which is all about different types of watercolour painting. So yeah, today's video is going to be all about painting washes. So that's where you paint like large areas in watercolour. So it's about like how to get consistent fields of colour if, if that's what you want to go for, or how to kind of get blends, graduate colours one into another. So I'm going to show you a few different ways of getting different effects uh, from getting a really clear, clean wash without any bleeds with a really constant colour right across it to uh, ones that are kind of much more mottled and interesting. So then we're going to use that to paint a background. Um, I'm going to paint a background of stripes, but you can use any of the techniques that I'm going to show you today. And then I'm going to do a really, really simple mark making pattern on top of that. So I've got my paper, I've got my watercolour paints, I've got my two jars of water, a paper towel, and for this I've got um, some masking tape, and I've got a couple of brushes here. So I've got a kind of medium sized one, and I've also got the biggest brush that I can find, the biggest watercolour brush anyway. So this one's a size 12, um, but yeah, you can get much bigger ones than this, this just happens to be the biggest that I have. The bigger the brush that you use, the easier you'll find this. The other thing that I've got is I have got a piece of board. Now I'm going to show you why I've got a piece of board uh, in a minute. But um, yeah, so you just need something kind of solid and flat and bigger than your piece of paper. So I've got a piece of dry watercolour paper here and I'm going to create a wash across the uh, page and I want to try and make this as even as possible. So I'm just going to put a line along the top edge of the page and then just keep adding more pigment and keep drawing those lines further down. And I'm trying to keep the levels of pigment nice and equal. And I'll just keep working into it as it's still wet so that the colours blend together. And if you get areas that um, aren't blending terribly well you can go over them again while it's still wet. But if it's started to dry as it has up here, um, if you go back into that area you have to kind of do the whole thing. So you can work back into it but you can't kind of stop, you have to kind of do the whole area. So let me show you what I mean so I can start working back into here but I'll get like a solid line along here so I need to blend it into here and back up into this area at the top of the page and I can keep moving my paint around while it's still wet and I can do that as much as I like as long as it's still wet And now this bit down here has started to dry, so I need to go back in there and add in more paint down here. And then I can cover the whole of the page. And I just keep going backwards and forwards and blending those together while they're still wet. But as soon as they start to dry, then um, I, I'm going to leave it. So I think that's all I'm going to do with this one. I'm just going to leave this one to dry now. So this is a wash that's all one colour. You can also do a wash that uh, goes from one colour to a different colour or you can do a wash that um, goes from one colour down to nothing. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start with the same blue And again, I'm going to start at the top of the page and I'm going to put a line of it along the top of the page like this. And I'm going to add in a bit more there. And then rather than going back into my colour, I'm just going to dip my brush into the water and I'm going to add in some water along here. And then do that again, 
add in a bit more water. Now I want to bring some of this pigment down from the top so I can do that and bring it down into this area here and then I can go back into my water again and keep going making it paler and paler until I get to the bottom of the page here. And I can do the same going from one colour to another. So I'm going to mix up some more blue here. And wash my brush and then I'm going to mix up some pink. And when you're doing this you want to mix up quite a bit because you want enough to cover your whole page. So I'm doing quite a small um, piece of paper here but if you were doing a bigger one then you'd want to uh, to do more uh, to mix up more paint. So again I'm going to start at the top of the page here, run that along And then what I can do is I can start to bring in some of that pink and I can place it below the blue but then I go back and mix it into the blue like this. Now I need to wash my brush because I want to come back down into the pink again. So I want to be able to pick up clean pink and mix that down here. And I can mix that all the way to the bottom the page. See I didn't mix enough. Thought I had, didn't quite get enough. And now while it's all still wet I can move this paint back and forward. I can go up into the blue and then I can bring that down into the pink. And if I want more blue in there I can take, wash my brush, get more blue on my brush and bring it into the uh, the blue at the top and then drag it down and blend it into the pink. I can do that because it's all still wet. So now I can go with the pink and blend that all the way back into the blue and then that gives me a graduated wash that goes from the blue down to the pink. Another thing I can do is I can just coat my page with water. So just giving it a good douse of water all over so you should be able to see it's a little bit shiny. And then once the page is nice and wet you can pick up colour and drop it in. Let's do some pink, dab that around you can take some more concentrated colour and just put that in there. Now there's still quite a bit of water on the surface here so I can use that to mix all the colours together. This is going to be very messy, this one. The key to getting nice washes is to blend colours while they're still wet, so whether that's with the same colour so you get a nice flat wash across the page or whether that's with different colours. So you can do that just by putting colour in patches like this. But as soon as you put it down it starts to dry. So if I want to blend some more colours into this for the rest of the page I'm going to have to move quickly. So. Let's add some colour next to it and then I've got this bit here which has been drying plus this bit here which is now starting to dry as well so I need to kind of go in and reactivate the paint on those edges while it's still kind of wet and blend them together. 
and I can keep going and adding different colours but anywhere that starts to dry you need to get in quick and start adding new colours in there and then you can colour a whole page with different colours like this but every edge has been blended while it's still wet so occasionally you get bits here like where the uh, this bit was wet and then this bit was dry and you get it, get it a harsh line there now you can just leave that or if you want to you can go in again and you can add a second layer on top of all of this so you have to do the same thing again when you put in new paint on top, it'll start to kind of reactivate the paint underneath. Um, so you need to do the same thing again and keep moving it around. But as long as you keep moving it and you keep re-wetting it, then you won't get any of those harsh edges and harsh lines and you can add in extra layers of paint over the top and keep going until your whole page is filled again. So this is the background that I did when it was all wet and then I added colour into it and you see because it was really wet it's kind of dried unevenly so you've got some of these kind of funny marks. Um, part of that is because that when you wet the paper it buckles so it goes funny shapes and the more water you put on it the more it'll do that. Um, you can uh, help some of that by stretching the paper before you add water to it so you can do that with some masking tape. Um, you can tape your paper right down onto the table that you're working on or you can use a board. So I've got a bit of uh, plywood here that I use sometimes and you can just tape your paper right onto this board here. The benefit of that is that it allows you to tip and move and tilt the board and you can move the paint around on the page while you're doing that, which obviously you can't if it's taped to the table. But if you want to uh, use gravity to help you create a nice wash or to move paint to different parts of your page, then having it taped to a board that you can move around can be really helpful for that. So let's do that for this one. This also gives you the benefit of a really nice clean border when you've finished and you take the tape off. Another way of achieving the same effect is to use watercolour paper that's on a block and that's already stretched because it's gummed on all four edges so it doesn't move or stretch when you uh, add your watercolour to it. So for this one I'm going to paint some stripes and I'm going to use a variety of different colours. I'm going to tilt my board up a little bit, I'm just going to hold it up and I can put a stripe along the top there. And holding the board up allows the paint to kind of move down so it blends nice and easily into the next stripe down. So then I can put in another stripe beneath it and you get some lovely effects where the two paints merge. Do another one.
There we go. So again, I'm going to leave this to dry. So here are all of the washes that I've made. So there's a flat wash. I've still got a few brush strokes in there. You can get better at this with um, with uh, better quality paper and a little bit more patience. But yeah, I don't mind a little bit of variation. I think it makes it look, yeah, hand painted. Uh, this is the graduated wash that I made. It goes from dark to light. And then another graduated wash going from blue to pink. This is the wash where I added patches of colour and then blended them together. And this is the one where I saturated the whole page with water and then dropped bits of colour in. And you can see it's dried a little strangely because it was very, very wet and the paper all buckled. Um, and again, you can resolve that by taping it down. But actually, I quite like some of these. And if you want a really interesting textured background that's really unpredictable, then this is a good method to try. And then this is my stripey one. So today's exercise is to paint a wash and then do some mark making on top. And I think I'm going to do some stripes, so I'm going to do this one. Um, I'm going to work with lots of different colours and I'm going to do it on a much bigger sheet of paper. So let's get set up with that. So for this I'm starting with dry paper and I'm going to start by mixing up some colours. I'm going to add this extra little palette. I think I want purples and pinks um, and I think I want some warm colours as well so I want some of these kind of warm yellows and reds as well so I'm going to keep the purple and the pink but then I'm going to mix up over here I'm going to mix some uh, some reds and, uh, and yellows. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the top of the page down to the bottom and put in stripes of different colours and different widths. Again, I'm using my big brush and sometimes I'm going to use the brush on its side and um, try and get a nice big swoosh of colour and then sometimes I'm just going to use the tip of it and try and get a nice fine stripe. So I'm going to start with the purple. And for this, I don't want the paper texture in there. I want a kind of a nice solid block of colour. Let's get some more pigment in there at the top. And now I want to keep moving, so I've got to keep adding layers of colour. So I'm going to put some pink in, and this one's going to be a thinner stripe. And I'm just touching the edge of the purple and letting the pink run into it. Let's move that around a bit. Now I want to go in with this warm yellow. And again, I'm going to do a fairly big stripe along here. And I think I want this to be even bigger, so I'm going to put in another stripe beneath it. And I'm just going to keep going and adding stripes of different colours, different sizes and with different amounts of pigment in. So some of them will be lighter and some of them will be richer and deeper.
And back up here I'm getting some interesting marks where these colours are kind of bleeding together but one was slightly drier than the other um, so I'm getting some really interesting marks there. So if I didn't want that I could go back in with a wet colour on top and blend them together a little bit better but actually I quite like that so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to add a lot more water onto my brush now with the same colour and put a paler stripe along here. And then just while I was talking that really quite have dried quite a lot so I'll probably get some more of those marks along there. Now I'm going in with this warm yellow and yellow and purple are opposites so if you blend them together too much you'll get a grey kind of colour. A bit stronger yellow on the bottom. And more of a red beneath that. And I hope you can see I'm just having fun playing with colours and seeing what happens when you put them next to one another. There we go, there's my page full of stripes and there's some really interesting things happening around here. I'm quite liking that. And I'm just gonna leave this to dry and then I'm gonna come back and do some mark making on top of the stripes that I've put down. So now this is all dry, I wanna go in and do some mark making and I'm gonna do some really, really simple mark making. So all I'm gonna do is take my brush and I've got a slightly smaller brush this time. So this one's a size seven and I'm going to use the same colours but I'm going to make them a little bit stronger and I'm going to just touch down the brush and make little marks with um, either the very tip of the brush or with the body of the brush. So let's start with this red one. So I'm going to do the red on the red stripe and I'm just going to press my brush down and lift it up. Keep going back and getting more paint on the brush. And there we go. So I'm going to keep doing that um, across the page, different stripes and different colours. And then I'm going to do some smaller marks as well. So I'm also going to put some slightly smaller marks in, so I'm going to zoom you in just so you can see a little bit better 
and I've got the same brush and I've still got some of the same paint on it but this time I'm just going to touch it very very gently and just tap the very end of it and if I get a little bit more in some places a little bit less in others that's fine and let's do another row of that and some of the bits are a bit closer together and some are further apart and I'm just kind of bouncing the very tip of the brush just off the surface of the paper So that's it. So I'm going to do that again in a couple of other places and uh, yeah so we get a range of different size marks. Makes the whole thing look a little bit more interesting. So now I can take the tape off. And you get a lovely clean edge. There's lots of fun things that you can do with washers like this. I mean, you could paint something like this and then paint a silhouette of, of trees or something in front of it. Um, and it could be a really quite pretty sunset. If you've got a really kind of solid blue sky, something like this would work very well. Or like this for a kind of hazy summer day. They're really good for landscapes and seascapes, but you can also paint abstract things over the top of them as well. And we'll be using washes in some of the projects coming up in the next couple of weeks where we'll be painting a wash um, of colour over the surface and then adding layers on top of it just like we've done with this pattern here. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you do follow along with any of these, I really love to see them. So if you post them on Instagram, tag me at Lou Rachel Davis and I will enjoy sharing them with you. If you've got any comments or questions then leave them down below and if you want to see more either in this series or more videos from me uh, then please do subscribe to the channel. I'm halfway through making a series on watercolour but I also do other drawing, painting, making and printmaking videos. So thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you very very soon. Bye bye!